everybody it's Sunday December 12th about 2 o'clock it's about 45 degrees outside it's a really nice day there's some kind of crazy windstorm coming today um, but we're in Goshen we're gonna drive on uh, uh, the dirt road that we were on the other night over by Camp Mo in Goshen and we're gonna talk today a little bit about some of the reports that we've been getting so this is really cool we're really excited um, I want to talk about one report, and uh, there were two truck drivers, and uh, they didn't know each other, um, and they both drove along the Berlin Turnpike Route 5 and 15 near Hartford, between Hartford and Meriden, and Berlin was another one, um, and, and of course, Hartford, that's where the Connecticut River and the tunnels that go under Hartford are, and my friend Robert uh, Grossman, who just joined Welcome to the group, Robert. So uh, good to have you. Um, he went under those tunnels, and I'm going to find out more about that. But here we are in this dirt road. Um, so we have two reports. These truck drivers were driving on this Route 5 and 15. And this is really interesting because it's urban sprawl there. And I've been thinking about it. And we got a report today, and it all just sort of made sense to me. Um, it's a little bumpy here, so don't mind my voice. Uh, late at night, when there aren't a lot of people out, and I'm going to say average was around 3 a.m. in the morning, so it's really late. And the Berlin Turnpike is known for um, human trafficking and just a lot of. But what is, what is, what do their reports share in common? Late at night, urban sprawl on or near the Metabasset River, which is a tributary of the Connecticut River, which is of course the largest river in New England and one of the largest in the Northeast, barring the Hudson. Um, they reported um, the size varies. One was tall, one was man-sized. Um, but other than that, they, they were um, very similar, that this thing appeared. It had a sort of an indescript facial features, large, grayish, white, opaque. And um, uh, if I remember correct, we're going to put the, the specifics of the sighting up. But, um, the hands were odd. Nickel Mine Brook Trail. How come I didn't know about that? Oh, we're going to explore that. So Nickel Mine Brook Trail is right there. Um, very scary. Uh, one of them was um, ominous and, and looked into the cab of the truck. And the other one peered out from behind the building. And we looked into this in descriptions. The closest thing we could come up to was the rake. And the rake world put up that information was a nasty little fella not little uh, bad not only is this guy creepy violent dangerous but it sort of haunts you it will keep reoccurring in your life and it is definitely not to be messed with and, uh, I'll just we'll put up the legends we received one today, a report of um, something that I'm going to identify that I think happened out near Rhode Island in Patchogue State Forest. Uh, this happened down, again, very close to Hartford on the Connecticut River, right near the Farmington River, um, tributaries of the Connecticut River. Uh, the description was of a golem-like creature with very strange sounds, lights that are normally on, that weren't on, um, owls making strange noises, probably in distress because, you know, owls, they got that, who, who cooks, who cooks for you, um, but if they're screeching in an off pattern, it's definitely an alarm, um, they definitely do that out there, so a golem-like creature, I, I know of something just like, now offhand, I don't know the specific name of, the, of this of this creature, um, but we want to thank you for your reports. I don't remember which way we go. Yes, I do. <laughs> I want to know where that goes. Um, yeah, th there was a creature seen like that with no facial features um, on a stone wall, and like much like these stone walls at night, just sort of. Oh, look at that! Red tail hawk. 
and you could see the red tail. Brother hawk. Now, so this golem-like creature has been seen before in Connecticut. I can't tell. Those look like buffle heads. Bufflehead waterfowl or mergansers with the sun on my eyes. I can't see it. Those are red crested mergansers. Uh, yep, they are. Cool. Hawk and a red crested um, with the red crested mergansers. So the stone walls uh, we know very well in Connecticut. Um, this thing was just there and staring at this kid and then it followed them and stuff we're gonna get the story but our own eyewitness described something and they probably didn't know about this thing and i can't even remember the name of it offhand um but from the description and the size the time again that thing was in pretty dense population our own reporter uh the person reporting was in a pretty fairly dense urban setting in the historic area around windsor And so let's just say these people didn't know each other, right? Um, they don't know that someone just like them made a similar report. And of course, it is good to know that and then to report it to us and don't report it to the authorities. They're just going to they're just going to hide that away and, you know, put a flag on you. So don't send it to us. Let us be the crazies for you, okay? But you're not crazy. You're wonderful. Now I'm going to share a report, I'm going to share my own eyewitness encounter. This would be over 10 years ago and I was living in East Hartford along the um, Hockenum River, which is an excellent, excellent trout fishing river. It's a tributary of the Connecticut River and I was in East Hartford on um, not too far from Wickham Park and I was living there and it was February and I was I decided that I would do maple tapping even though I was in a parking lot there were these magnificent maples and as I parked you had to go around a fence and then the fence was this straight sheer cliff down and I mean sheer I had to hold on to just not fall over into the river and it was all kinds of broken glass and I had my maple buckets set out there and I was I was maybe a week into the season, so I was back and forth every day. You got to check them every day, your buckets. I was getting a lot of excellent syrup there. Big tree. Never been tapped. I go back. I get home from work on a weekday. I go back there like I did every time, bringing the, the, the replacement bucket with me and the other one, the filled bucket, back into the apartment to boil it down. I'm not thinking nothing, so... And I've never told anybody this. I go back there. It's getting dark. And there was this Gnosqua type thing that was looking into my sap bucket. And it went crashing down. I didn't get to see it long other than I can tell you it wasn't a bear wasn't a moose. They don't happen a whole lot down in East Hartford. Not to say that they won't. And this thing was knocking over trees, just disappeared from sight into the brambles, and I could hear it down, knocking over trees, howling, rocks were flying, and it ultimately splashed into the river and onto the other side. And to this day, I mean, I, yeah, this was 10 years before any kind of ceaseless thing. And I never talked about it. And the reason I didn't talk about it, and uh, this is for you people that have seen things out there. The reason I, and you know me now from our videos, this is what we do. I'm not, I'm not self-conscious to report this anymore. But the reason back then I didn't report this to anybody or say anything uh, except I ran inside to my roommate at the time and I did, didn't tell the story. Except for that, I told no one. Because you get that feeling like, well, maybe I misidentified it. And I did. Okay? I did. And no one's going to believe me. And there we go, right back to the culture of ridicule. 
and it's pretty sad. I'm telling you this story now, this far ahead, and this was again right near Hartford. So Greater Hartford area is definitely full of cryptids. So I guess what I'm saying is, here we are in this wooded area. You've been, we've been driving around, getting ready for the storm. Um, just because you live in a city, Boston, or the outskirts of New York or something, you know, maybe I bumped into a squatchy type thing. I think it was a squatch. And it certainly didn't expect to see me back there. And it's a nice greenway where I'm talking about. But um, if, even if you're in the suburbs, in fact, most of our reports right now are coming from the greater Hartford area. So Hartford, Greater Hartford, I'm going to give you a solid five on the squatch meter and We're going to follow up with details, the details. We're going to keep people anonymous unless you want us to, to uh, talk about it. If you want, we'll come down. It's getting about time where we're going to start meeting some of the witnesses and talking to them. But there's my report. Now the camera person had an incident and I was there. I was driving and I had to keep my eyes on the road, um, but not far from a cattle farm, Litchfield, I'm not going to give the specific area, he saw a Bigfoot, and it was late, late at night, and I was too tired to turn around. We went back, um, and this was reported as, I, of course I was there, a very large grayish gray like like my gray hair color ashy colored squatch right by the road okay I'm being told it was actually black okay not gray so this is why we, we give dates and times and information written so that we keep accurate because it was darker this was at night we went back the next day during the daylight to, to follow up should have done it right then and there but didn't I was tired um and there was a very large tree knocked over and it was not really a windy night it was if i can remember correctly a maple tree and they're pretty strong you know it's not like they're birch where they just snap randomly this thing was pushed over so there there's a little bit of some of the reports that we're getting. I didn't touch on them all. Some of them lean more towards the squatchy ones, like my own encounter, camera person's encounter. Hey, we're just not afraid to talk about it anymore. We don't want you to be either, but talk to us where you got at least a, a forum of like-minded individuals. And, um, you know, don't be afraid. Don't worry about the ridicule. Just just report it and we're going to follow up and we want to thank you and it's been a pleasure talking with you about encounters we're going to drive and we're going to stop in a state park get on location and just uh chatting today we're just speculating but so connecticut connecticut cryptids you might not think this is the squatchy estate and i'll admit it it's not you know you've got a lot of reports from oregon Pacific Northwest and New York but now the cryptids people are encountering here are things like rakes wendigos I mean they're just unusual cryptids they're not squatchy there are some squatch reports but the stuff we're getting they're they're definitely odd and so Connecticut has that man we got a lot of strange cryptids We'll, we'll talk more about that and uh, we'll put up the written information and we just want to thank you again for being with us as we chat about some of our reports I don't know of any sort of cryptid reports in this lake but that's something you do when you follow up Today, right now, we're just going to the boat launch. And the reason we're going to the boat launch is one, listen, it doesn't matter if you have a boat or not. A lot of these boat launches 
have the same facilities that a state park does. They're free. A lot of them just get a tube and go swimming. <coughs> it's usually a gravel bottom or concrete or something. And um, we're going there today because, well, we'll find out. You just never know. Every time you go to a boat launch, there's just something. I don't know. It's just one of those backwoods things to do, you know. You just go and hang out at any boat launch. <laughs> now, CSIS members in Connecticut, I highly recommend you try this. <clears throat> Looks like there's a dam up there. Interesting. And uh, just go. Go on a weekend and hang out at your local boat launch and then get back with it. Send us the reports of bipedal uh, primate behavior. AKA your normal drunken guy hanging out at the boat. Let us know what you get. We'll follow up. We'll come and take some blurry photographs of the guy or person, woman, uh, maybe some plaster casts, a sample of some um, plaid t shirts and uh, sports hats. Let's see if we can get that kind of thing. Oh, here we go, candidate right here. What is he talking about? But look at this thing. jump in the water today um, hypothermia I should become hypothermic in about a minute and, and a half so uh, I'll swim around for like five minutes no, I'm just kidding hypothermia is no joke try to avoid it at all costs the uh, the camera person almost became hypothermic filming on the John Muir trail earlier today a separate video gotta listen a few other other cryptid people or whatever you're doing on YouTube you have a camera person you owe them dinner for sure for what they put up and here we are and of course this section is flooded but look at this this is cool you can come here anytime look at that diehard over there fishing that's what I'm talking about okay 